Greetings, tuberos. You have to excuse me for just a moment. I'm about to have my lunch. Cheers. Right. Where were we? Well, that's me full of burgers, so the world is now an infinitely better place. So, welcome back to part two in a series of four short videos in which we examine the various direction from which these imbecilic whack jobs approach their fervent belief in a flat earth. Now, in the last video, we addressed the religious fundamentalist flurfers who mistakenly believe the Bible tells them the earth is flat. So, in this video, we will look at the devout but more secular conspiracy theorists. Now, most of us have come across conspiracy theories at one time or another. In fact, it's almost impossible to go online without coming across some sort of conspiracy theory, whether it's, you know, the story of, uh, of the MK Ultra experiment, where the CIA put LSD into the water supply of a whole town in order to monitor the results that it would have on the population, or perhaps... Um, uh, Ronald Reagan's administration floating mines into Nicaraguan ports uh, in order to disrupt shipping. Or even uh, Tricky Dicky Nixon trying to cover up his uh, sanctioning of illegal surveillance at the Watergate Hotel. Um, all conspiracies and all those actually turned out to be true. Some conspiracies are true, many are not. But um, our conspiracy flurfers, they have much larger truths to uncover. They believe that every government, every astronomer, every geographer, uh, physicist, pilot, mariner, topographer, mathematician, um, every radio operator, of which I can count myself amongst their number, hence the transceiver at the back but there, um, they believe that all these sort of skilled people and many other professions are engaged in a global cover-up that involves making us all believe that the Earth uh, is spherical and orbits the sun when, as far as they're concerned, uh, the truth of the matter is that the Earth lies at the centre of the solar system and is the only one out of over 4,000 observed planets that happens to be a large flat disk. Now I've got some serious problems with this, not least because the Earth is observably and demonstrably a sphere, but also because the people who believe this nonsense and tend to bang on about it at, at great length, despite lacking any evidence whatsoever, also tend to believe with great conviction every other exciting conspiracy that they, come, that they, they come across during their, um, their high IQ research, um, which actually involves them watching YouTube channels that already align with their own particular insanities. Um, they think that they must be true, these conspiracies, simply because it's counter to mainstream opinion. Um, if they read something about, oh, I know, um, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, um, they read something about it being used as a portal to allow, I don't know, trans-dimensional beings to come through into our universe, then they are immediately on board with it. No questions asked. They read the article, this must be true. They watch a baseless YouTube video where someone who lives in a secure compound uh, in Montana claims that the Harp Array in Alaska is actually a weapon of mass destruction that can control the weather and send tornadoes and hurricanes to any part of the world and they think, that's very exciting. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. Their paranoia is at such an extremity that they believe nothing unless it has come from either their own minds or has been proposed by one of the equally retarded vloggers that they devoutly give thumbs up clicks to uh, on YouTube. So imagine they delight when they watch a few videos claiming that the earth is flat. Boom, they are immediately fully on board without even questioning why such agencies should cover up such a thing. What advantage could there be in having us thinking that we are living on a globe. Spoiler alert, we already are. But why are they so quick, do we think, to assimilate this mindless fairy tale 
into their own personal philosophy. At the most basic level, it boils down to an inability to perform any actual research. Um, their own idea of research is, as we've said, watching YouTube. And the few whose formal education stretched beyond watching Sesame Street will join various conspiracy-based Facebook pages where people like me are regularly blocked for pointing out the, the glaring errors in their arguments. They are intellectually incapable of truly understanding the subject they're commenting on or exercising any method of critical thinking, which causes them to get overly excited, um, more by style over substance, um, regardless of the theory that is being proposed. But there are other factors. The internet and the emergence of the internet has allowed everyone to anonymously voice an opinion. Now, some of us still remember the very first text forums that appeared online, uh, mostly dealing with the issue of UFOs back in those days. Um, there you could find all sorts of opinions on the subject, um, some from people like myself who approached it with you know, a, a critical mind, uh, to people who were quite convinced that all politicians uh, were mouse gulping reptilians from the Draco system. Um, and they claimed to have proof. They had no proof. It was just an idea they had, and as far as they were concerned, their idea was good enough to form the very basis of a rock-solid opinion. Um, the internet has also given everyone the luxury of an equal platform. Anyone can post a video on YouTube, and anyone can comment on it. And whilst this is something that I support wholeheartedly, the problem with this is that it gives these basement-dwelling conspiracists just as much opportunity to spew their basis opinions on astrophysics, UFOs, political opinion, or, or even soap manufacturer as an actual expert in those fields, despite these conspiracists lacking even the most basic knowledge of the subject. They see other people aligning with their own opinion, so they automatically assume that they are onto something and continue with their fruitless pursuit, digging ever deeper into a pit of their own ludicrous fallacy when all they're actually doing is proving the rule that like attracts like. Now, a classic example uh, is, is this man here, the uneducated gate swinger, Chris UK. He thinks that attaching cameras to gates and swinging them, swinging them back and forth is demonstrating that the earth is flat. Uh, he comments on how you can take these observations, apply a logarithmic formula, that sounds good to the uninitiated, and thus prove the Earth is flat. The only problem is that he has no idea what log logarithms actually are, or how to apply them, and in fact doesn't apply them for the rest of us to see. Um, in fact, the man doesn't possess even the most basic mathematical skills. Thinking as he does that the internal angle of uh, an equilateral triangle measures in at 45 degrees. And his reception class error was hilariously presented by Simon Dan in one of his recent videos. Um, link to that in the description below. Now, another reason these people believe in the model of flat Earth is their inability to comprehend the scale of cosmology. Now, we're not dealing with a few miles or even a few thousand miles for the most part. On the smallest cosmological scales, we're dealing in hundreds of thousands of miles. And for the most part, we're dealing with distances so large that they have to be measured against the speed of light rather than in standard physical distances. Now, unable to fathom such colossal distances, um, they simply allow their tiny minds to handle the concept of cosmology by reducing everything to a human scale. Hence, their belief that the sun and moon are only a few tens of miles above the Earth and that the rest of space doesn't actually exist. Their minds are small. So they want the universe to be small in order to be able to grasp it. Now, this is the principal factor behind another conspiracy theory that they have all grabbed onto, and that is the denial that NASA, or indeed any other space agency, has ever sent anyone into space, let alone to the moon, um, despite the sphincter loosening amount of evidence to the contrary. But what do these people do in order to maintain their position. 
um, you would think perhaps that they would counter with a complex formula displaying the physical limitations of rocket science. Um, do they present a testable theory disproving the ability of spacecraft to withstand the stresses exerted by gravity or the susceptibility of astronauts to high levels of radiation? No. In true Fleur for fashion, they simply deny the facts without actually presenting any evidence against them. Now, in this respect, they're very much like the, the religious flatards in that they have a belief which does not, as far as they're concerned, require proof. And those who think they have proof are simply displaying an embarrassing inability to understand what it is they're actually observing in the first place. Um, just because they can't comprehend the concept, they think that those who make an observation counter to their theory must be either thick or lying. This also proves to demonstrate the unbelievable arrogance of the secular flat earther. Um, they must believe that they are most in, the most intelligent people on the planet and the rest of us, they, we must be as thick as two, two spring mustard because if they don't get it, then they believe that there can't be anything to get when in, in actual fact, the complete opposite is true. <sighs> now, I, I could go on all day possibly, but um, I'm becoming very much aware that my videos are probably too long already and I think most of you would probably appreciate it if I shortened them slightly. Um, so there we have it, the secular flurfer. They believe that pouring water on a tennis ball or dropping an egg into some salty water disproves the existence of gravity. Um, they think the sun and moon appear to be the same size in the sky um, simply because they are the same size but they're the same distance from the earth. They have absolutely no idea or are unable to grasp the concept of perspective. Um, they can't comprehend the distances involved in a legitimate study of cosmology, so simply reduce it to a scale that their tiny minds can comprehend and even then can't grasp the dynamics of what it is they're looking at. And I believe that much of this behaviour is actually a subconscious reaction to their own realisation that they are basically a bit thick and hold those who do understand these concepts in a state of contempt due to jealousy. Now, these people, they have no legitimacy whatsoever. They are in fact a gross embarrassment to the rest of humanity since they are judging the entirety of human scientific endeavour and knowledge against their own minimal ability to comprehend it. And their massively overinflated sense of their own cognitive abilities presents them from realizing that they in fact know absolutely nothing. Now that said we will be returning once again to the world of the Flat Earther in the next video. Um, we're there we will be looking at the motivations of the Flat Earth charlatans who publicly state their Flat Earth beliefs in the main so that they can keep their channels monetized and make a living from it. So if you've managed to get this far, then please do consider subscribing. There's a little subscribe button down here somewhere. Um, in a moment, four will pop up, give him a click, then you'll be subscribed. If you want to know when my next uh, ranting video drops onto YouTube, give the bell notification a little click and YouTube will send you an email on my behalf. So as always, thank you for watching. Please look after yourselves, look after each other, be nice, I will catch you next time. Until then, Heulbauer. Yeah.